Every day, many people ride trains. Some commute to work, while others are traveling for vacation. Some of us are tuning in to the voice and electronic signals being sent. Here is how you can tune into train signals in your area. To begin, you'll need an SDR or software defined radio and the appropriate software. Today we're going to use SDR++. You can learn more about setup of SDR++ in a prior video here. And you can also find a link in the description. The practice or hobby of following and or watching trains is called rail fanning. Be sure to check your local laws in regards to listening to train transmissions. Also you should note, never transmit or interfere with these signals. Not only is it illegal, but it's unsafe. In North America, we'll focus on a group of 96 AAR, which is the Association of American Railroad Channel Voice Transmissions. Some channels may be digitally transmitted and unable to be listened to directly. We'll be listening to analog voice at frequencies ranging between 159.810 and 161.565 MHz. I've created a channel list of all of these frequencies for SDR++. Check the description to see how you can get a copy. You can research these channels using the Radio Reference website in the United States. Simply visit their page, enter your location, and review the available frequencies. When you're ready to tune in, we need to make sure that the antenna is the correct length. Go to tunesignal.com slash ts-antenna-calc.html and enter in the frequency that you want to tune in. We will be tuning 161 megahertz, which makes our half wave antenna length be two feet, 11 inches approximately, which is 35 inches for each dipole lead on our antenna. Hey, 982, you could just start easing them down. Plenty of room to ease them down, 982. No hurry. I think this will be good enough. Let's look at a couple of settings that you're going to need to begin to listen to train signals on your software defined radio in SDR++. You want to make sure that you go ahead and plug in your SDR and when that happens you'll hear a sound if you have your sound enabled. It's going to then allow you to click on refresh and then your SDR should be detected here. If you're using RTL SDR you'll want to make sure that this drop down has RTL SDR selected. If you're using a different SDR, select the appropriate SDR and then click refresh. You'll want to set your sampling rate to approximately 1.92 megahertz. It's going to give you a sweet spot for approximately how much of the frequency band you'll actually be looking at. We're only looking at about 159 megahertz to 161 or so. So you really don't need a lot of bandwidth being sampled here. Next, you'll want to make sure that you have your settings as I have indicated here. There are settings that will allow you to adjust, for example, the gain. And right now, we're just gonna use RTL AGC and the tuner AGC have IQ correction selected. And then also we'll want to set the radio type to NFM, and that's going to be for radio. Direct sampling should be set to disabled. Direct sampling is only used when you're listening to frequencies below 28 megahertz or so. While listening to signals, you'll typically hear static when there's no transmission. In this menu, you can enable squelch and adjust the slider to allow you to set a threshold that must be reached before you can hear a signal. Yeah, if you got like 26 cars, you shouldn't get anywhere near them. So we got, uh, I measured it, almost 2,700 feet in there. Sometimes you'll listen to one signal, but other times there'll be multiple signals 
and you like to hear those also. With SDR++, we have a single defined radio. These are also called VFOs. We'll learn about that in a moment. And the associated audio device. You'll see here that it's associated with my speakers. We can actually add an additional radio from the module manager. The module manager has all of the devices that are added, including your SDR and some additional plugins and other features. You'll see here that we have our single radio and we can click on this drop down and add another radio. Scroll here, select radio, and then we'll name it. For ease of use, we'll just call this one Radio 2 so we can find it. Click on this plus and you'll see that it popped up all the way at the end. I'm going to click it and I'm going to drag it all the way over to the other radio. So this right here, as I select them, you'll see that it'll turn red, indicating which item that we have selected. I'm going to scroll here and you'll notice that we want to turn off our bookmark here. And you'll see that Radio 2 has a setup very similar to Radio 1 with our audio device. And you'll want to check this because sometimes it does not automatically select your audio device. We can also adjust the volume independently on an individual radio. And you'll notice that that one changed when we change the second one. And we can adjust this volume and it's independent of the other radio that we've got created. Next, there is our modulated section for our radio. So we have the radio component that is here for radio one. This is where we set whether it's FM or AM. And we're gonna collapse that so that we can drag our other radio up to the top because we have a limited amount of space to be able to move this. I'm gonna drag it all the way up here just under radio, expand that and let's make the settings the same. I'm gonna set it to the same setting of NFM and we'll check that here. We'll also want to make the same settings for, for example, for squelch and we'll check that box here and then drag that slider all the way over to approximately the same amount of squelch. You can't type this in in this particular version. Hopefully they add that in the future, but you'll want to drag it and get it uh, as close as possible. Um, doesn't have to be perfect unless you're dealing with a very specific amount of noise. So when you're happy with that, we can uh, adjust some other settings with our radio. You'll notice that there's some options for VFO. VFO stands for variable frequency oscillator. We can set the colors for the radios. They're also called variable frequency oscillators. And you'll see now I have one that's set to a white color and another one that's set to red. This is gonna be helpful for us to be able to tell which one we're looking at. Let's go ahead and add another radio. If you have a computer with enough processing power, you can add multiple radios. You'll see that one just popped up, it's pretty big. You'll notice that it's uh, kind of got that grayish color, but you'll see here that the radio setting did not take the audio as it did before. So we're gonna have to set that. I'll select it and it did default to my speakers, but you wanna check and click to, just to make sure. We'll adjust the volume so that the volume is approximately the same. And we're gonna scroll down and grab that radio and drag it up here to put it just under our other radio. And I didn't collapse it, so now I'm kind of sort of stuck. Let me go ahead and scroll up here so that we can move it just under um, radio two. Set the frequency modulation to NFM, set the squelch here to approximately the same amount. And if all that looks good, and let's go ahead and create a fourth one. on that and we'll adjust the audio to make sure that it's set to our default that's correct 
And then scroll down and grab the modulator for radio four. Notice how the entire area here is taking up. You can only have all your radios in the sampled area that you have on screen. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this up to the top. Uh, we need to move down here so we can get more real estate. And then drag that up to just under radio three and expand that one. Let's set this to NFM for the modulation. Enable the squelch and put it in approximately the same amount as the above items. And that should be close enough. Next, let's go ahead and recolor our VFOs. We're going to make this one a nice color. Let's set this one to yellow so that it'll stand out. And then also we're going to set this last one here. Uh, let's set that one to like a greenish color. Now, you're going to notice something that just happened here when I created them. These two actually stacked up on top of each other and I just moved that off and you'll notice that the green and the yellow look very similar and that's why I tend to not use them so I'm gonna set this green one to a bluish color so that it stands out a little bit better than the green and the yellow so now I have all three of my radios or VFOs remember that stands for variable frequency oscillator here on the screen we can move them around and set each one of them to different frequencies. And also you'll notice that when we move the mouse over it, it's labeled. You see that one was called radio. And each one of these items as we move over them will tell us some information. If you go to the center point, it'll tell you the frequency for each one of them. And you just have to wait. and that will give you other details. Next, here we can actually tab through each one by pressing page up or page down. Page up moves them to the right. Uh, selects the item. Page up selects the item to the right. Page down selects the item to the left. And we can just alternate through each one of those. You can also disable the radio as you can see here clicking radio 4 it just disappeared out of the list here clicking radio 3 and you might want to do this if you find that you're having some performance issues which is a problem on maybe an older machine you can just simply remove them you'll see that the audio devices are still there even after they're disabled Spacey ship. Spacey ship.